Okay, so the last speaker is Garrett Cole from Crystalline Mirror Solutions, and he's going to tell us about the progress of the Crystalline Code. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm going to talk about the Crystalline Mirror Solutions. Today, I'm going to work in the development of a 300,000 software cavity at 1542 here. And this work is done about 8,000. Wait, John, then you want to have John Robinson from the GUE group. And some of the measures that we're showing when they can work on that lab that they will just put them also uh, in Boulder. Um, I'm just going to jump right in because I'm not going to continue as much. So uh, I'll give a really brief overview of TNS, as a uh, critical mirror solution, and then some background on the normal and programming noise and particular technology. Uh, the second section of the talk. I'll uh, hopefully get some work we've been doing over the last couple of years and it's really pushing towards backing good possible performance in our coding, bringing these to a level to bond more with the state of the art R&D by the multi-layers. In the final section of the talk, I'll give an overview of the design and performance levels of this reference county that's proposed to the So, really briefly, Chris Ramirez mentioned the CNS. Uh, we've developed this unique optical coding technology, so as opposed to direct deposition via ion beam sputtering or say, ion physics separation, we can take single crystal semiconductor network structures, which is the counting marks on aluminum, counting marks on multi layers, or also in the regional column spotters. We remove them from the initial growth substrates and we bond them directly to the final optics. The big selling point of the advantage of this material system, uh, this technique, is the ability to achieve high, high optical performance, while showing the source of deposition. But also a significant reduction in the variant noise due to uh, large improvements in the chemical performance of the building. This quantity fine is used in precision metrology, so spectroscopy, uh, cavity state level wave system. Turns out the coding has some other interesting advantages that we didn't really perceive initially. I won't cover those here, but if we have possible losses again, so so much iron beam sweater film with a the thermal conductivity that's about 50 times higher than the iron beam sweater film. You can actually maintain transparency up about 10 microns. It's really a possibility to export your million level of losses to 4 microns, uh, 5 microns and beyond. So that's, that's kind of interesting. That's sort of turned into some new spin off application areas that maybe back to the On some level, we're basically advanced building work. So we can then cut some substrates that we can coat. We can now, working with the target company, co uh, optics in San Rio, we can supply the on substrates that are coated, we can even go full reference cavity. It's a picture of a probably 10 meter long cavity uh, that we're testing on the building system. Anyway, uh, yeah, this, in case you were interested, this is obviously a very niche field. You know, to do ultra stable uh, interferometry, but the company supports 12 people, and last year we sold a billion dollars in the market. So even in these really niche areas, you can actually do so much to this thing. Um, now for the, the larger talk. You know, it turns out these really advanced scientific systems that, that thermal or specifically grounding noise become really a serious engineering challenge. This is everything from centimeter length of optical reference cabins to these stable wave systems up to these longer length gravitational wave detectors, which are all about from very small to talk yesterday. And some of you may be visiting tomorrow. Uh, uh, this grounding noise issue was really first appreciated by the gravitational wave community in the late 90s. And, uh, yeah, they did a lot of work over the last 15 to 20 years to uh, get the theoretical background to this. Um, and a lot of early experimental work was done in the cavity state of the city. Um, the basic idea is that the, the simplest way to think about this is that, of course, these optics sit in some finite thermal bath, but it's doing some finite temperature, it's not zero double. So all the mechanical modes of that body are being pumped by the so basically, you have the grounding motion of the individual atoms that make up that component, um, and you have these resonance with the mechanical uh, you know, high modes of the system. And ultimately, it's the, the magnitude of that grounding noise scales with the mechanical dissipation of the system. And I think this is something that's not obvious to, to a lot of people. I apologize for folks that have seen these slides before, but I just want to go into more detail how the mechanical dissipation uh, really controls the magnitude of the grounding noise. So let's take just the simple fabric for reference cavity, uh, shown here, cutting cross section, and it consists of three parts. 
the original spacer that holds the two mirrors in the fixed separation. And the mirrors themselves consist of a separation and then a higher specialty probably the And again, as I said, the fixed system compliant temperature, you know, that bodies undergoing mechanical motion to just do this brilliant noise. And this perturbs the calculus. Now, if we take this one isolated mechanical load of that system and we plot its noise power spectrum as a function of frequency, you'll see that the resonance peak there. Um, you also note that we're going to be you know, probing this cavity at a much lower frequency than the initial resonance. So we're measuring things you know, very far off, off that resonance. And this plot is actually showing that mode with three different levels of off the surface, mechanical loss. So to improve the mechanical quality back in the system or reduce the mechanical dissipation, it actually starts to attack the noise in and around the resonance, block it down around the resonance frequency. And if you go to the extreme case with the zero mechanical loss in the system, no loss of the coding to the separation of the spacer, you can have a double function on resonance. You have no off resonance more. And this is how you understand that the, you know, the mechanical dissipation ultimately drives the very noise force in the system. And keep in mind that showing the results of this one mechanical resonance. But ultimately, you're going to have an infinite you know, series of all the mechanical resonances to the box. So all the off resonance tails going down the DC are going to come together and set the noise force. Really, the goal is to reduce the mechanical dissipation in all parts of that cavity. Turns out the coding for each problem one is the first thing the optical will be able to see. The really strong interaction with the cavity line. The other issue is the mechanical you know, the coding for very poor mechanical uh, dissipation. So the spacer is sort of inspected at the mechanical Q1 in order of 100,000. The substrate may have only or your tens of millions of mechanical Q. The coding has a mechanical quality average.
going through the you know, task we've taken over the last couple of years to improve the cost and performance of our coding. Uh, one thing to point out is you know, we did this really nice paper in 2013 where we recommended the, the, the thermal board of a small reference cap being in with our coding. And there we were looking at optical loss levels at this sort of 20 ppm uh, range. And now we're going to show how we can put this down now to a few ppm. Um, and realize these are just standard optical interference coatings. So this is a brag reflector or multi layer pulsating high end and low end material. And each of these constituent layers has a possible thickness of a quarter wave. Um, then if you put a you know, light field piston on it, you can grab that kind of decay and all these little internal uh, reflections uh, at structurally into the system and you get high reflectivity over this sort of stock end, this narrow stock end here. Um, it's a few hundred nanometers long. Um, in these coatings, there's you know, three loss mechanisms. You have transmission through the system, which depends on your direct index contrast between the high and low index layers, and the number of layer pairs you use to build up that stack. As long as you have good thickness control and deposition, transmission can be used to design in these coatings. Then there are two other extrinsic loss factors. These are absorption and scattering. So of course, you know, photons are being absorbed by defects or impurities in the coating, or photons being scattered off out of the cavity mode due to some uh, roughness. Or defects and this is also on how we work to produce the absorption scattering system. Uh, we use a process known as lots of the back here, and we to grow our, our multi layers. Again, we can then realize a single crystal uh, stack to affect the arbitrary thickness. We do not own our own MPE meetings, we rely on outside families to do the growth. This is a very large production system that we use, so that's an awful share of the scale. It's a 60 centimeter deposition chamber. Um, and we basically have the we set a design for the, the crystal growth boundary. They grow a multi layer, and then for this, these experiments, we sent the parts to a small star called Cancer to a thermal solution that is sent off LIGO, uh, located in a very terrible place called um, Apollo Hawaii. So for each data point, we basically take a part, have a drone, and then beat the system, and then shift it to a wider absorption. It's something really, they can do you know, direct absorption methods in terms of part of the building. Um, I'm going to condense all the results into basically one plot. So it turns out that what's the most exciting scientific advancement? We found out that the way to produce the absorption of the coatings is just to grow them as fast as possible. So it turns out we have a background of lots of impurities in the chamber, uh, but able to the, the final outcome will pull the chamber wall, pull the excess sources that are not using, and then just grow as fast as possible. Just to reduce the incorporation of the battery cost. Uh, once we have that process dialed in, uh, this is an example of a measurement on the, the best film that came out of that growth campaign. Uh, this is measured using this photothermal pump and pass interferometry technique. You have a strong pump beam incident on, on your coating. The pump beam is chopped or time modulated and forms a time modulated thermal lens. And you can also pass this probe that measures the phase of the thermal lens. You rely on the fact that the coating is a thin film compared to your bulk accelerator. And you just need to know the thermal properties of the accelerator. One disadvantage of our coatings is they absorb strongly in the visible, and uh, the probe used in that case is the UV neon laser. So we have to now plot absorption as a function of the probe power and extrapolate back to zero probe. So imagine if the probe was not absorbed or did not induce excess absorption, you would just have a flat line here. Uh, but here we have to walk the probe power back and we're going to zero probe. Um, in that case, we find the wire set at 26 ppm. This doesn't make sense. More recently, we swapped out the neon neon probe for a, just a near infrared, below 50 nanometers laser size, and we verified that measurement. We got 0.7 ppm, a little uh, sort of error on that measurement. So the basic outcome is we now have lost much of the get less than one part of the absorption to 1064. I won't show you the absorption curve for young markets, very flat, so this means they may have to at least two microns. And uh, I think recent measurements of the last week have shown that we can achieve you know, five parts per million absorption out of four microns. Uh, uh, so anyone who wants a hundred thousand times scattered four microns. Um, scattering is now the biggest issue with the flight waves. So one problem here, because we don't own that machine, uh, well, we get some waiver delivered, but by the defect density, is small crystal like the scattering arc that are uh, incorporated during the deposition. Uh, the same system a few months later, another growth 
drug campaign is very slow to that. So I won't be setting in clear areas with no effect. The problem is we can't specify this, so we have to take a look. Um, of course, this is terrible. This is going to start at night with all the key tests. are all scattering centers, technology tests, and all the system. And you can also see that the, the sort of dedicated key tests change. So the, you have very strong position in that in the optical law. So let's take one of those highly effective coatings and note that every time one of these little quick lights gets embedded in the film, the layer is during growth, the sort of that growth uh, medium layer that is more uh, This small lump propagates through that layer to the center layer. So any defect incorporates any form during the growth uh, propagates through this top surface and now it's getting integrated from all the defects on the top of that coating. So if you build a cavity, this work done by Wei Xiong and the Yu group. Build a cavity with one meter on the base of state where you can walk it around. Uh, what you see is that a very large variation in the rate of time is the function of the position. So not only do we have excess loss, but we have a very poor position in this here. Uh, not going to claim this is a long-term solution to the problem, but as a short-term solution until we have our own epitaxy capability. We've come up with a way to sort of microcapitate around this problem. So we essentially remove the multi-layer from the growth that we have access to both sides. And it turns out that the back side is much cleaner than the front. Uh, they can see the number of the substrate surface, and you don't see the integrated sum of all the defects on the uh, back side as you come from. So if we take this coating disk, flip it over, and then embed the defects at the, at the bottom of the interface, we can now achieve a much higher uniformity in terms of uh, the positions of the, the loss. We also see a large reduction in the loss of the loss. So using this technique, we'll be able to uh, achieve specific independent losses that we fix the speed measurements on a roughly one centimeter. Okay. And all the scatter plus growing levels fall less than five parts per million. Okay, so if this compares to the loss of the 15 to 20 PPM level that we were seeing in terms of that. Okay. Um, so now building upon that advance and, and sort of improving the optical performance, we now constructed this uh, all stable optical revenue scatter that's up here. So it's 25 centimeter long and you know, phasers, 10 centimeter diameter, which is mid right now. It's actually been developed uh, by Mike Martin in the course of his dissertation work in the Jews group. Uh, the, the centimeters are a huge silicon subject with a one meter radius curvature, and they have UL8 compensated roots here to see the ear crossing of that cavity. This is actually photos just from Mike's thesis. You can see the cavity sitting in the strap and the central vacuum chamber there. Um, and this will also be used for a higher stable. Uh, that cavity with the uh, optics uh, with the transmission level of 5 PM ended up having a net of 300,000. The total loss is per meter on the order of about 10 parts per million. So we're looking at 5 PM transmission, 5 PM mechanical absorption. Um, again, this is a big improvement over our, our, our previous methods. This covered in, in detail in that data that's currently on, on the other side. One thing to point out uh, is that our coatings are actually fairly strongly fiber printed. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it's one of the people aware of it. So if you notice know, all the photos or drawings I showed before, the, the disc out here is a small flat. So the coating itself has a small flat, and this denotes the flow of that back through the coating. So care has to be taken that the two meters need to be aligned in the sense that the flats need to be parallel. Um, and typical amorphous coating will give you a county fire fringes on the order of 10 minus 5, say somewhere between 10 minus 4 and 10 minus 6. But we're looking at a few parts of 10 minus So in that 25 centimeter cavity with a line of two kilohertz, we actually have a total data from the most plenty of 220 kilohertz uh, with our uh, as the cavity gets shorter, this is where it gets even longer. So in that 35 millimeter long cavity in the strong phaser, we're looking at a four megahertz most um, And this is covered in detail on the supplementary information that they were ready to watch. This is a theoretical most performance of that cavity. So if you take that same 25 centimeter long cavity and you use your IDS film, uh, you'd be looking at a, a thermal input. Uh, how many days is another floor of 2 times 7 minus 16 in some seconds? And if we are some slightly below uh, 1 times 7 minus 16, so something like 9 times 7 minus 17 in one second, if we swap out the, the critical encoding. Right now, this cavity is under test, so it's being measured in a three corner half comparison with the strongest plot laser 698 and the generation 2 credit filter cavity. That way, we'll cover in detail. The real goal here is to get some higher bounds on the on the mechanical loss of the coating. We actually do direct mechanical rate down studies, but don't have that direct thermal uh, measurement. And the other point.
point is that you know, in our earlier work, we really just took the, we made a small caveat on purpose to amplify the, the thermal moment, which is a lot of the, the walking on this. And now that the thermal moment, we're really cooking on the, the, the circuit, so we've been making really state of the art versus the cabinet. You know, stuff tends to be uh, out in the game. And um, also, I want to point out there are digital systems, you can go to the variety of wavelengths and also operate the improvement of the rivers of dry ice. Now, for one more summary slide, so again, the, the point here is that the Crystal Sodium now has uh, you know, possible quality on our design team study system for those you know, parts of a million of the loss of losses and stuff you can uh, absorb it is one thing about it. Coupled with a damping reduction of 10 degree temperature in the hundred degree trial. And uh, note that there's not just one row of results, we have more than 200,000 units reported at 